So today I want to talk about target optimization for mean reversion systems. Now, um, conventional wisdom is that you ought to be having a 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 risk reward ratio. You hear that all the time, but that actually doesn't apply to mean reversion setups. So mean reversion, you have two broad categories of trading system. Well, there's more than that, but but in the broad strokes, the most common things are, are trend falling and mean reversion. Trend falling relies on outlier wins. You have to capture outlier wins, uh, and it's low win rate and and big winners. Mean reversion is the very opposite. Mean reversion is a high win rate and small winners. Now, for the system I'm developing at the moment, which I'm releasing next Wednesday, our goal is to be profitable four out of five trading days. So to be profitable four out of five trading days, it's impossible to be relying on outlier wins because if you're taking a 40% win rate system and um, you know it's statistically impossible that you're not going to have many many days where you lose and lose and lose and lose and lose again and that's exacerbated by this inherent property of markets where your winners and losers cluster which is a thing called Bayesian probability and it happens because the biggest influence on your trading system performance is how well your uh, trading system fits with the market type. So if you're doing a mean reversion system and you've got a choppy day, you're probably going to do pretty good. If you're doing a trend following system and you've got a trend fall and you've got a trending day, you're probably going to do pretty good. That's what that means. So anyway, what I want to show you is the grunt work and the calculations behind how uh, how we work out um, how we work out uh, um, a target. So what I did here is I pulled out the maximum favorable excursion. So what this is is how far, how far at its best point each trade got before it reversed enough that you'd have to jump out of the trade. So you can see here over this sample that nearly all of them either made just over or just under an R, and we have a fairly steady run up to two, and we have a flat spot just over two, and then we have you know a handful of outlier wins up here. And this is a pretty typical mean reversion thing. Now, it's very tempting to see these big three bars and go, oh, I want that 5R winner. That's me. I want to... And it's also very tempting to say, ooh, big chunk of two Rs. I, I might sacrifice these winners here for the two Rs. Okay, so here's what I did. I took some calculations on a target of 1R, target of 1.1, target of 1.2, 1.3, all the way up to 2R. So I calculated my R from winners, and of course, if you move your target up, say, to 2R, all of these that were winners become losers. Now, uh, this is not a particularly accurate simulation because in the real world, some of those would have been, you would have moved the stop to break even, and something that got to 1.9, and then and then drop down to zero. You might have jumped out at break in. So this is not perfectly accurate, and I'll I'll go and uh, and you'll see why I don't need to be perfectly accurate in a minute. Um, it, if there was some doubt, I would go and and manually work out which which of these trades made a certain amount, made say 1.5 R, and then and then got stopped out for break in. So, um, but it's not necessary to do here because the data is very, very obvious, as you're going to see. Now, so what I do here is the R from winners in this instance is uh, a count of, of my list of MFEs where everything is greater than or equal to 1. So, uh, the, so to do this, we use this formula count if in Google Sheets. So you type equal count if, and then the range comma, and then inverted commas, and then equal to or greater than one. That gives us the number of winners if it's one R, and then we count the ones that are less than one. So the count if the same range, less than one in inverted commas, and then multiply that by negative one, because each, one count, each loser counts as negative one. So our total R is 18. Our expectancy is 0.52, our SQN100, oh, to calculate SQN, SQN100 is 10 times the ratio of expectancy to standard deviation. So expectancy divided by standard deviation. So how did I calculate that? I just dodged it up. So what I did is I said if we have 27 1R wins, which we did, and then 8 1R losses, 
what was my standard deviation. I put it here. It's the standard deviation here. And I made another matrix for 1.1, which had 25. And that was easy because I just, I just took the same thing and then added an extra two negative ones, filled the rest in with 1.1s. I know that at 1.2R I have 24 winners, so I have 24 down here, and then the rest filled up with negative 1Rs, and so on and so on and so on. You can see, you can see like this, and I built this matrix, and then I copied this formula all the way through. So you can see that the standard deviation gets progressively l larger. So let's look at this again. So our expectancy, what we're looking for if we have a good system, is expectancy where it's not just one outlying number. If I saw an expectancy of 0.52 there and a 0.2 there and a, it all random, I would be very, very concerned for the validity of this system. I would be thinking that I'm curve fitting. What you want to see is a good number in a forest of good numbers. And you can see here we've got as low as 0.48 and as high as 0.56. And our highest expectancy is 1.4. So 1.4 R target makes us the most money. But is that the one that we should use? What do you think? Is it is one point is the is the most money the goal? So it's a very amateur thing to optimize your system for the parameter that gives you the greatest money. That's actually a massive mistake. You don't fucking do that. So what you want to do, professionals are always thinking about drawdowns because drawdowns are what hurts, drawdowns are what sucks, drawdowns are what fucks you over. So what uh, drawdowns are largely a function of standard deviation and you can see that the standard deviation increases steadily every single time we bust up from 0.86 to 0.52. So our system quality number decreases. So our system quality number is a home trader approximation of Sharpe ratio. So the Sharpe ratio is actually highest with a target of 1. Now, this is going to get a little bit weird because one thing you have to understand is that your losing trades have slippage. So your losing trades will probably have um, one tick of slippage. So our average R value here is 12 is 14 ticks. So our average slippage will equal 14 on 15 equals one on 15. Sorry. So our average slippage is going to be 0 0.06 on the losing trades. Okay, so, so one left. So what I'm going to do here is what am I going to do? Um, I am going to make this equals this plus this by 1.06 because our losers are going to be slightly bigger than our winners and so our total R insert one to the right Okay, so our total, our new total R our R with slippage is going to be our winners plus our losers And let's see how slippage affects that. So the point that I'm making here is that um, we've got a high win rate system, so we're minimizing the effect of slippage, which is important in intraday systems. So you only get slippage on losing trades because your winning trades are hitting a target, right? So this is very important to understand. So, so our total R without slippage was 
18, 18.5, 18.8, 18.9, here slippage is quite significant. At 1R, at 1.1R, slippage becomes, and 1.2R, slippage becomes less significant. So even though it's not the absolute best parameter to use, I would use 1.1 or 1.2R and most likely 1.1R um, because when we calculate our new expectancy, set column left, check this out, expect with slippage equals do equals dun, dun, mm. Okay, so our expectancy with slippage here's our targets over here here's our expectancy with slippage compared to no slippage and you can see that expectancy with slippage is a little bit better with 1.1 and 1.2. It rises one, uh, uh, to be the highest here. Now, let's do SQN 100. Let's recalculate that with slippage because that's the uh, that's the reasonable thing to do. Is expectancy with equals 10 times the ratio of expectancy with slippage to standard deviation and you can see that it's gone down because of the slippage all right so still our expectancy with slippage is highest at one but i would still use 1.1 r target because it's never a good idea to uh to optimize for the absolute uh um for the absolute best number it's it, that's never an idea now one thing that gives us a lot of confidence here is that this is our SQN100 versus our target in R. You can see that as the target goes up, the risk-adjusted return, the, SQ, the system quality number 100, which also correlates to Sharpe ratio, is going to go down. So what we're in effect proving is that even though we make more money with a higher, with a bigger target, we make more money simply by taking more risk, which is taking on more beta. So our our, our most alpha is with one or 1.1 R target, and uh, and this correlates with. Um, most mean reversion professional systems end up at about one to one risk reward ratio and you can absolutely see why here because the data supports um, that's what the data supports okay